welcome back to the channel with me, Gemma, and Dane and Sally. And it's Christmas, I don't know if you've heard. Now hopefully you have a copy of the Crumbs and Doilies book hiding under your Christmas tree or about to be dropped down your chimney perhaps. <laughs> um, and if you don't, don't despair. It'll still be available next year. But um, I hope that you're all enjoying it. We're certainly enjoying seeing you guys baking from it. We absolutely love it, don't we? Absolutely. Yes. So today we're gonna ha get Christmassy boop, boop. and we're gonna make something really tasty. It's a little Christmas tree macaron. Yes, yeah, so they're gonna be different sizes of macarons that are gonna be layered up with a filling of, well, two fillings. One is gonna be a whipped white chocolate and brandy ganache and the other one is a spiced salted caramel and they are both delicious combine it all together the crispy chewy macaron the soft fillings mwah, delightful yum really yummy and you know these are my favorite thing to make so <laughs> the first thing we have to do is make the shells so uh if you guys leave me to do that you exit stage <laughs> left and right and i'll get on with it because you got to make the filling because oh, yeah. we can't make macarons i get it <laughs> <laughs> okay so the first thing is to do, we've got a food processor and I'm just gonna add some ground almonds. I've got 190 grams and 205 grams of icing sugar going straight in. I'm just gonna pulse them for about 16 to 20 times just until the ground almonds have ground up a little bit finer. These will make your macarons nice and smooth. That is all done. Now, the only thing left to do is just take these out and pass them through a sieve set over a bowl because Although we've ground them a little bit more in the food processor, there still might be a little bit of almond that is like chunky and the blade didn't get it. So we'll just pass it through the sieve and it looks like almondy snow. There are still a few little bits in the bottom of the sieve, but they're like minuscule. They're way less than a gram, so you can just throw them away. They won't affect the mixture, do not worry. To that, I'm gonna add some egg whites. So I've already separated some eggs. I've got 72 grams and another 72 grams in the bowl. And then I'm gonna add this to the almonds and icing sugar mixture. And we'll just give it a mix round until it starts to form a paste. It's nearly made a paste. But because these are gonna be Christmas tree macarons, they all have gotta be green. Unless you're like a kind of white Christmas tree person, then just keep them this color or add a bit of white coloring. It's up to you, you might make purple ones. I don't really care, as long as they look great and taste good, which these are gonna taste brilliant. I've got some food coloring. So I've got a mixture here, you can't really see the difference, but I've got um, paste food coloring because that works really well in macarons. Sometimes on the channel we use like the liquid food coloring, the color mill colors. They aren't so great for that because they're oil based, so it will affect the mixture. But I've got a mixture here of like Christmas green and also mint green. So just put in as much as you desire. The paste is gonna be quite dark because you want it to be concentrated. Once we add the meringue into this, it's gonna lighten the mixture quite a lot. This is all one consistent color now, which is great. So we can put this to one side and start making our sugar syrup because there's two constituent parts to a macaron. That is the almond paste and then you've got a meringue, whether it be French meringue or Italian meringue, which we're gonna make here. So that consists of some caster sugar going in. I've got 190 grams going into a small saucepan and then 60 grams of water. And then we'll get that on a medium heat until it starts to come to a boil and you want it to reach 110 degrees until you start whipping your egg whites. This has come up to temperature now, so time to prepare the bowl. I've already cleaned the bowl with some vinegar just to make sure there's no dirt in there so that your egg whites will whip up really nicely. And then all I'm gonna do is pour the second half of my egg whites into the bowl and get that whipping on a high speed. Your egg whites should look kind of like frothy and really white, not super stiff, and your sugar will be getting to 118 degrees. Once it reaches 118, take it off of the hob and pour it slowly down the side of the bowl, being careful not to touch the whisk or the bowl. So in between that gap is the sweet spot. Once the syrup is all in, keep it whisking on a high speed until the meringue is cool to touch. The meringue is ready. So it should be really nice and kind of thick, glossy, a little bit like this. It's got a little bit of flop to the peak, but it's perfect. So all we need to do now is mix it with the almond mixture that we prepared earlier. Just need to get all of that meringue off. We don't want to waste any of it. 
and then that's what we're going to do. But we need to mix a little bit in first before we mix the whole lot in, just to slacken the mix. Because it's quite a lot of paste and a lot of almond mixture, this is quite heavy. So if you just go to mix everything in, it's going to be really hard and we'll knock out all the air that we've created. After you've added the first bit to slacken the mix, just dump all of the meringue into the bowl and then we're going to slowly but confidently fold it through the mixture, cutting through the middle every so often just to make sure it's all nice and incorporated. Once you have confidently but swiftly mixed your batter, this is what it should look like. Okay, so what you want is to lift it up and it's kind of like thick lava. I always say this, but I've never been near a volcano, so I don't know. But it kind of ribbons back into the mixture like this. And then if you leave it for about 10 to 15 seconds, it should all just almost settle back into the mixture. So you can still feel, see a couple of lines, but that's it, that's it. And if you over mix it, then your batter will be quite runny and that's when you know you've gone a bit too far. And if you've under mixed it, it'll be really thick and it won't kind of fold back into itself. If it's really thick, the macarons will be really thick and they might also be a bit lumpy. If it's really thin, you just get like flat pancakes, which we don't want. So I always say this, take note of what your batter should look like, like this. So it's now time to put it into the biting bags. But I need some help. So Gemma, are you, can you just please give me a little I'm help? I'm always ready. What Thanks. do you need? What do you need? Piping just bag? Piping bag. If you could do this, yeah. and I'll tell the viewers what is going on with the trays. So Gemma has already prepared the baking trays here and they are lined with some greaseproof paper and then underneath we've got these really snazzy templates which I know you always ask so you can download them if you go to the description box below we've got the link for you you can download this template for these macarons so there's four different sizes and they're all spaced really well far apart so that they don't run into each other unless your batter is runny then it will spread scrape it off and start again or just bake them eat them whatever you want um, but yeah it's already three trays and we might get a little bit more but that's okay, we can just do another tray. And Gemma is nearly done. I'm not gonna lie, this. I've made a terrible mess. I mean, look at the state of me. It's a good job I'm wearing an apron. Sorry, you thought I was <laughs> a pro. What's going on here? He asked for my help thinking I'd be a pro, but turns out I'm just a mess. It's okay, we can, <laughs> we can salvage this. Right, okay, it's almost all in. Here you go. Oh no, oh. you've got it all over your way, friend. I know, all right, Dave. I've got it everywhere. <laughs> Everybody can see it. <laughs> here you go. Thank you very Ooh, much. Oh, it's coming out. That's okay. You better do your thing. There's Let's a, there's do a, clip a behind swift you. change. No, it's okay. We've got Bye. it. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, Gemma. <laughs> so, what we have here is the bag, and all we're going to do is pipe. So you want to hold your tip like vertical, like this, to the to the pan, and I'll just show you. That's like the best way, right? See that? Just really swift a lot of pressure and keep them quite plump as well because if you go too flat then they'll spread out and you won't you'll just get like a thinner macaron but I'm gonna get on with piping the rest and then I'll show you what to do afterwards that is the last one done we're not quite ready to bake them yet we need to bang them on the surface just to get rid of any air bubbles like this and also what it will do is just flatten the mixture out as well and just make it nice and smooth i've got one more to do so stick with me on this turn the volume down if you want to <laughs> that's it and these don't have any protruding bubbles that have like come up and just stuck there but if you do get them get something like a cocktail stick and just give it a prod and a wiggle to smooth that mixture out again now we need to leave these for about 30 to 40 minutes just at room temperature on the surface just to form a skin and what this will help it do when it bakes is just to help the macaron kind of rise up evenly and not get any cracks on the top and that should take around 30 to 40 minutes i say but it depends on the environment whether it's humid cold um, but what you're looking for is it to be dry to the touch and also when you press down this is a good tip if you press down like on this bit of your hand, it should feel like this. So a bit kind of like squishy and dry. Squishy and dry, that's what you're looking for. Okay, I'll see you in about 30 to 40 minutes. The 
the skin has formed on these. And I'll just show you a little bit of what it should look like. So I'm running my finger over. It's dry and smooth. And remember, this bit of your hand, if it feels like that, it's ready. You don't want them to be too dry or else that can also have a problem when they're baking as well. So the oven is already preheated to 165 degrees. And because these are all different sizes, they're gonna go in for different times. So this smaller tray is gonna go in for about 11 to 12 minutes. And then the other two trays, we'll check those and give them another like four to five minutes. Right, see you later. Gemma, over to you. Thanks, Dave. Now I am going to be making a spicy salted caramel bit. And I want to make that now so that it has a chance to cool down and be completely cold by the time we use it. Otherwise, well, you don't want a warm macaron, do you? I've never tried it. Maybe it's delicious, but not today. So as usual, you want to make sure you get your creamy element of your caramel ready so that you're not faffing about at the end with boiling hot sugar, super dangerous. So I have my bowl here and I've got 250 grams of double cream. To that I'm gonna add my spices. So I have one teaspoon of cinnamon, a pinch of cloves and a pinch of ginger. That's all going in there, along with a pinch of salt and half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I'm just gonna whisk that all together till it's nicely combined. Lovely, now just set that to one side and now you need to get on with baking the caramelly bit. So I've got my saucepan here, it's a nice medium sized saucepan so that if it bubbles up it's not going to explode. And I have 250 grams of caster sugar, I'm going to add 125 grams of water and then get that onto a medium heat. It's going to start bubbling away and you do not want to stir it. If you stir it you might end up crystallising it which is bad news. After a few minutes, it should start to colour. Now, don't take your eye off it because it can go too far at this point. So keep it going on a medium heat until it reaches a lovely, rich amber colour. It's ready. It's a lovely, rich amber colour, as you can see. And now it's time to put the cream in. So be very careful. You want to add a little bit at a time, stirring constantly the whole time. And it does steam up a lot, as you can see. So make sure you've got a lovely long spoon and you don't get your face too close. Otherwise, you'll get a very, very intense facial. So just keep adding a cream a bit at a time, just stirring constantly. Whew, it's steamy in here. <laughs> and then once all the bubbles start to subside, you can just go in with the rest of the cream. And it smells incredible. All those lovely spices are all heated up and it Oh my gosh, it smells so Christmassy. But this is good for any time of the year, guys. Don't, just, it's not just for Christmas, it's for all year. So you wanna pour that into just a heat proof bowl and then leave it to cool somewhere because it's obviously incredibly hot and it does stay hot for some time and we don't want that. We want it nice and cold. Right, over to you, Sally. Awesome, so I am gonna make the final component of our Christmas macarons, and that is the whipped white chocolate and brandy ganache. It is super duper easy. If you've got a microwave, it's gonna be even easier. If you don't have a microwave, you can just do this over a bain marie. So the first thing we need is white chocolate. So I've got 450 grams of white chocolate here. If you can use chips, then that is fab. If you're using a chocolate bar, just chop it up until it is really nice and small, just so that it melts a lot quicker. And into that, we're gonna add 150 grams of double cream and two to three tablespoons of brandy. Now look, I'm going for three tablespoons because it's Christmas after all, but if you don't wanna do that, then just stick with two or just leave it out completely. What we're gonna do now is melt this in the microwave. So I'm gonna put it in for very short blasts, starting at around 30 seconds, giving it a really, really good mix after that 30 seconds. And then we're just gonna keep putting it in for 10 to 20 second blasts until the whole lot has come together into this lovely smooth mixture. And what you'll end up with is this mixture here. It's really runny, it's really smooth, and it's really yellow. So when you melt your white chocolate and your cream together, all the kind of fats and the oils are mixing and it turns into this rather kind of slimy, kind of looks like condensed milk type thing, which is not the most delightful looking. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna whip this up. It's also gonna add a really lovely fluffy texture to it as well. Um, but you do need to let it cool down before that happens. I like to cool it down at room for temperature because it kind of sets evenly. If you've not got time, do it in the fridge, but give it a stir every few minutes so that it does start to kind of chill out evenly and you don't have like hard bits forming around the edge. Anyway, lucky for you, 
I made one earlier. It's Christmas, I've got lots of Christmas shopping to do. I haven't got time to wait around. <laughs> and this is what it looks like once it's cooled, but before it's whipped. So the color has like toned down a bit, but it's still quite kind of stretchy and a little bit oily looking. So easily fixed with our wizards. You can do this with a ham whisk. It's just gonna take a little bit of time. So this one is perfect. Mm, maybe time to get one on your Christmas list, just about, if you haven't got one. Anyway, let's get whipping. And this only takes a minute or so, and look, it is nice and spreadable. I'm gonna put a spatula in so you can see. It is no longer kind of oily and slippery. It is spreadable and fluffy and delightful, which is pretty different to what it started like. It's kind of magic, really. Anyway, now I'm just gonna pop this into a piping bag fitted with a really small little piping nozzle on the end there. Um, I think this is an 8C PME, which is one of the ones I think you can get from cupcakegemma.com. Again, oh, got, not got long to get these present ideas to Santa, have you? Anyway, <laughs> filling this up, in come my troops. I heard there was some uh, delicious whipped ganache here. It smells Ooh, so good, I've actually only just realised how good it smells, because it's a boozy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little bit of brandy can do, but you don't Isn't have it? to use brandy, I'm sure she's, oh, I'm just going to go with <laughs> Just put her down Imagine there. <laughs> right, so we've got our macarons looking Lovely, obviously, oh, so. from the Macaron King himself. <laughs> <laughs> and Gemma's caramel, which is set. Oh yeah, this has been in the fridge, so it's nice and thick. Lovely, so we are good to go. So we're gonna start with, well, as you can see, I didn't do this. I Someone did <laughs> very neatly like matched these all up so they're in their kind of fours. And we're gonna start on the biggest one. Now I'm gonna do some little squishy star blobs all the way around. Is that the technical term? Yes, yeah, squishy star blobs. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to come in and fill that middle bit with some of this lovely caramel. Look at oh. that beauty. Oh, sorry about that. Amazing, right. Oh, we're gonna, so sweet. It does. It's going to be so delicious. Quite mm -hmm. hard to eat, but it's Christmas. So we'll work it out. We're going to put the next one on top. We're going to do exactly the same thing, piping a ring of the whipped ganache around the outside of the macaron, and then Gemma's coming in with her caramel. We're gonna keep going until we get to the top. And then I've just put a little blob of ganache on top, and I don't really wanna to touch this, but here you go, Saya. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <Sire>. <laughs> So I've just got some kind of goldy silver like little balls here that I'm just going to sprinkle around the edge just to decorate the tree. And then the last crown in glory is just a little star on the top. Oh. <laughs> it's really sweet, isn't it? <laughs> so sweet. I love it. I love it. But I want more. All right. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, I don't want to share that. Right, let's just get these done. <laughs> choose their Christmas trees in an actual forest and chop them down, except that these are free decorated. <laughs> and they so taste better. Sweet. <laughs> they look better from the front. They're really cute. <laughs> they look pretty good from the back. Yeah, they do look not bad. I mean, the main thing is that they look better in my tummy. I know. I mean, this ganache could do with setting a little bit, but... Yes. Ideally, as, as always with macarons, you would eat them the next day, yeah. wouldn't you, Dane? You would indeed. But... <laughs> But we just made these, so <laughs> <laughs> we'll eat them right now. Yeah, we're okay. going to put them in there, so. Oh man, I'm a little bit scared. I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be ladylike. I'm going to put my star to one side, and I'm going to just do this. Really? Yeah. 
Because wow. what are you I've doing? Got lipstick on. I'm gonna yeah. do this and then scoop. Oh, okay, this up. fine. Ooh. I was hoping that Dane would Ooh. just. No, because we've got to do the outro. But at the end, <laughs> at I the will end. put it all in. Yeah. This is really good. Okay, here it is. Actually, I'm not bothered about this not being set because this is so mm. tasty. Perfect matching. Oh my gosh, that is that so boozy. <laughs> it's so good. And all the spices work the so spices. well with brandy. Mm. I did try that ganache with like amaretto once and it just didn't really work as well with the mm -hmm. spices. Brandy's it's the amazing. One. It really tastes like good. Christmas. The brandy and white chocolate. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever done that before. I that combo that. is amazing. It is, isn't it? Mm. Oh my gosh. Mm -mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll be continuing to eat these long into the night. Um, mm. And I hope that you get a chance to make these for Christmas or for any other thing that you have going on. <laughs> um, we wish you a Merry Christmas. We literally wish you a Merry Christmas. We do. <laughs> yes. we thank so you much so much. About yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for watching this year. It's been super wonderful as always. I mean, it's been a wicked year, hasn't it? It's I mean. been the best year ever. And like, we could not have done it without you. And we also could not have felt the love more with the whole book thing and just generally being you. Yeah, thank you. It's been awesome. Yeah, it thank really you. has. So we, right. we wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> And a happy new, new year. year. <laughs> Down in one. Oh, you oh did it! Yes, 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 it's my you Christmas wish. I haven't got a medic. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, don't, don't try that. Oh, God, that's horrible. Don't look. <laughs>